and welcome to a SyncLodge how-to video. This one is System Overview for Music Supervisors. And let's start with the main dashboard. And there's the main tools access buttons along the top. And there you see a selection of dashboard notifications, including functionality. You can also set it to remind you later. But let's go into the settings folder and look at notifications. This is a list of all the notifications the system will send you through SyncLodge for actions. And you can decide which ones come to your external email address or which ones are just for dashboard notifications. Blue sends them to your email. Now let's go into projects. And here you see an overview of all the projects being worked on, including status, the type of project, and the level of completion and it can be viewed in the card view mode or the list view mode. You can filter the projects and you can sort the projects. Sort by end date and then it sorts the projects by end date. And add a new project. We have four different types of project types. This is video games, brand communication or advertising, movies and TV shows. So let's start a new TV show project. First of all you pick the TV show, and you can create a new one, name it, and then you can select a previously worked on television series or create a new one. Input the series number and the series name. Then you can set the overall music budget if you have one for the whole series. It's for sync licensing budget. And then we set the episode number and the episode name. And we create the new project. And there you can see it's auto-populated the elements we've already put in. You can select the project type. The length of the project. The number of spots or cues in the project. The start date, when you're going to start working on it. and the end date for project completion. There's the series budget, and then you can add the episode budget. And if you want, you can put in the overall project budget and choose the currency. You can put in the visual production company Start typing it in, and if it's already registered with our system, you can choose it. And then you put in the producer's name and the director's name. And all this information you can add when you first add the project, or you can add it later. And then we have the reference administrative country. And this is used to reference which musicians' unions and which sync administrators need to be dealt with based on territory of authority. And the project distributor, if you have it. And if you have the ISAN number, you can enter that. And then the production country. This is specifically for musicians' unions. And the post-production country. And then you add the project. And then you select your role. And select music supervisor. And there is the project. Now we can select the initial license rights, add initial license right, select the media type. And this is from the drop down menu, but you can also choose other and type in a specific media type. Let me choose territory. And here we have it divided up into continental areas. United Kingdom, we still consider part of Western Europe. I know, I know, some would argue that, but. And then we save. We add the license duration and we add the license start date. And we add the initial license right. You can add as many initial license rights as you want. You can choose worldwide or universe. And we'll go through the same steps and add it. You can also do optional license rights. And it's basically the same set up as the initial, territory, duration, 
license start date, but then we also have license execution date. And this is to notify you of a date when you should decide if you want to pick up the option. And you can add as many optional license rights as needed. Let's go into the project team. And here you see already added members of the team that was put into the project. You can add as many as you want and edit their access permissions. And then you can opt them in to receive a notification when the optional license execution date comes and also receive a notification before the license expiry date. And you can choose 30 or 14 days. And you can choose from the large selection of project access permissions and then save. And at any time you can add a new project team member. Simply put the member's name in. And if it's in your contacts already, then you can choose it from your contacts. And you add their role. You can choose other and then type in a role. And again, enable their permissions. And add the member. And when you add a new member, if they are a member of Sync Lodge, the system will send them a notification inviting them to join the project. If they are not a member of Sync Lodge, the system will send them an email to invite them to join the project. And then there's project files, where you can add project files from your main files or from your hard drive. Start with adding a brief. And then we can add as many project files as we want, and these are specifically aligned to the project. And we can add a file from our hard drive, and add a video file, and put in a description, and choose the file. And confirm that that's our file, and then the system loads it up. And it goes into your main files as well as into your project files. And you add the file. And there it is in your project files. Now let's look at spots. Here is the list of all the spots. The title of the spot, the status, the segment time. This is SMPTE time code. Usage type. And the budget. And now the system automatically does the math and divides the overall budget by the number of spots you can change and adjust this at any time. And then you see that it shows you that the budget is over. And we can go into the spot and we can set the start time and end time of this spot against the video time and select the music usage type and then save. Upload a brief to the spot. We're going to choose this one that's in the project files. And then we create the quote request. And here you see the overall information about the license fees and project and spot information. There it gives the main information, but you can opt in to add other data points for the copyright holder to consider placement. We also have a heads up for exclusivity where you can write in just a point of if there is exclusivity for the license. You can also add reply deadline and a conclude deadline to let the copyright holder know the time restraints you're under. We automatically have the license fee. This is for the one side. And then we can also add what the optional license fee will be. And we create a quote request. And you can add a comment. This comment code will go out to everybody that is receiving this quote request. And later on, I'll show you how you can add personalized comments too. And you can add a song to a spot. And first, the easiest step is just to add the song title and the performer. But let's look at the library and see how you can search for music. Well, this library is hooked up to Spotify. 
and there you can also have your playlists and this is all my all the spotify playlists that you would have we also can hook up to apple and we're hooking up to many other streaming services so i put in the song title and the performer's name i can search by isrc as well and by genre but let's just search for the performer and song title and then we get a list of all the releases this song is on we can listen to it right there We can look at more song information, or we can add it directly to the spot. And we choose the project we want to add it to, and we choose the spot we want to add it to. And we can add it and keep searching, or we can add it and go directly to the spot. And there it is. We can listen to it right inside the spot, and we can shortlist it. And once it's shortlisted, we can search for recording information. And there you see a list with also the release titles. We're going to choose the original release. And there you see the recording information from the ISRC code, the release information, including the label name, if there are any alternative titles on the recording, the data provider, and the work or publishing information. And if you click on the button, we can get detailed information of the work, including the ISWC code, alternative song titles, the publisher, and other parties which this one lists the songwriters and we can choose and ask yes we want to include the publisher information and we choose the companies we want to auto populate into the spot and there it is auto populated with their contact information recording information any information that we are supplied is auto populated we can go into the publishing see the songwriters and also the publisher and then we can send a quote request directly and this is the formatted quote request that we already built for the spot there's all the information we opted in and we can easily just send it over there we can add a personalized comment to this copyright holder and send and this shows it's waiting for ownership confirmation okay, let's look at files Here's the main file storage, you can add any files. There's also contacts, which work just like your own personalized private contact system. And you can select which ones you want to be as a favorite, and then they are in the favorite list. And you can also import bulk import, as well as adding single contacts. And then you choose your bulk contact import file and import it. Then there's messages. This works just like an internal email system where you can compose and send emails through the system. And if we look at this one, this one is a message regarding a quote request. And if we open it up, there's the full quote request there, in which we can reference at any time as well as inside the project. And here's one that's on contracts and we can open it up. And there we see the contract management system, which is also inside the project. And we can open the history, and we can see which is the current version. We can set a uh, previous one as the current version. We can view the file, and we can upload a new version. And this we choose the file, and we're choosing this from the project files. And we say that it is signed by both parties and we upload and then when you open the history you can see it's there and this is always accessible for you for future reference you can add additional contracts which is different from uploading a new version and we can send the current version of contracts to the copyright holder and then once again we get to we are allowed to put in a note directly to this copyright holder and send sent over to the copyright holder and we can go to the spot and see the spot and there we see with the green indicators that everything is completed on this song we can view the quote request we can view contracts and if we go into the queue we can place it then now it is placed 
go to projects, we can see that there is one placed in the status overview. And if we go into the queue or spot list, we can see that it is placed. And there we could see in the general project overview that four of the spots or queues have songs shortlisted and one has a song placed. And throughout the system, there are these little information icons, and this will give you guidance on functionality. And it's as simple as that. Now, if you need any more information, please feel free to reach out to us or look through the other how-to videos. Thank you very much.